Hello, my name is Douglas Block. Welcome to the Depression Recovery Channel, where each week we talk about practical tools and coping strategies for healing from depression and anxiety. Today is Flashback Friday, a feature in which I republish one of my earlier videos you might not have seen that contains really important coping strategies that will help you attain a better mood. Now here's today's video. The uh, name of today's video is an anti-inflammatory diet for depression. Before we start, of course, we have to tell our joke. Uh, and um, yeah, yeah, when I first got married to Joan, uh, she used to go to Catholic masses. I have a lot of friends who are Catholic. And uh, the first, this particular mass, I saw this the priest uh, sprinkling water on people. He said, this is holy water. I said, oh, that's really cool. How do you make holy water? He said, it's very simple. You just boil the hell out of it. <laughs> Right, it's interesting, I should say, boil the hell out of it because it's 96 degrees here in Portland. We're sweating here in the studio. At any rate, uh, the title of today's video is called An Anti-Inflammatory Diet. I took this information from one of the hundreds of videos posted on a, on a really cool website called nutritionfacts.org. Uh, I'll have that link in the description section run by a very respected medical doctor named Michael Greger who wrote a book called How Not to Die. And he, as you'll see, is a big advocate of a plant-based diet. In one of the videos on his site, uh, Mr. Greger, or Dr. Greger, refers to a 2014 meta-analysis, meaning analysis of many studies about the link between dietary patterns and depression. And these uh, studies all combined show that a healthy diet is associated with lower rates of depression. And why should that be? Well, I did a video a couple of years ago called, Is uh, depression, a disease of inflammation. You can look it up on, on my channel. And in that video, and doing the research for that video, I discovered that people who have depression have increased what are called inflammatory markers, like C-reactive protein, very common test that doctors do. In addition, inflammatory diseases like asthma and allergies are also associated with higher rates of depression. More powerfully, researchers have found that you can induce depression in people by inducing inflammation. For example, when you give a, a drug to people called interferon, which creates inflammation in order to uh, fight cancers and other infections, about, well, they said up to 50% of the people end up becoming depressed. Well, wow, that's certainly suggestive. So they did another study where they followed 43,000 women who, who didn't have depression, who weren't depressed over 12 years, and watched their dietary patterns and also watched to see if they became depressed. So it turns out after 12 years, the women who were more depressed were more likely to have a what's called a pro-inflammatory diet consisting of uh, soda pop. And what else do they have here? Oh, yeah, refined grains and meats, three things that have been shown to cause inflammation. So what are dietary patterns that reduce the chances of having inflammation? Well, they are plant-based diets. And why plant-based? Because plants, as opposed to animal products, contain something called antioxidants. So to us, they describe why this is important, we need to do a little bit of chemistry, which I've written down here. So uh, one way in which inflammation occurs is by oxidative damage caused by free radicals. You've probably heard that term. What is a free radical? Well, you know, an atom has a nucleus and has shells around it, and these different shells contain electrons, and when all of the electrons are in a particular shell, it's stable. But if there's an electron missing, then uh, you have a free radical. It's unstable, so the uh, molecule wants to bond to something uh, to fill, you know, fulfill the, uh, the the missing electron, and it often does to other uh, molecules that cause oxidative stress. This changes the chemical structure of some molecules in the body, and the body sees them as being um, foreign bodies. What does the body do when it sees foreign bodies? The immune system attacks them, and when the body attacks itself, this creates inflammation. Antioxidants come to the rescue because. Uh, they are able to donate an electron to bind with the free radical, complete the outer shell, and now the free radical has become stable and less likely or unlikely to react with other elements. So antioxidants therefore reduce oxidative stress and thereby reduce inflammation. As I said earlier, uh, foods that are high in antioxidants are plant-based foods, such as fruits, vegetables, legumes, grains, nuts, and seeds. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be posting a link on in the description section from a well-respected site called WebMD that lists the 20 foods that are highest in antioxidants. Fruits, of course, berries, especially beans, and also, for you chocolate lovers, 
Dark chocolate is very high in antioxidants. Oh, thank God I can continue to eat my chocolate love bars. Uh, and on the other hand, animal products contain no antioxidants whatsoever. In fact, uh, they contain endotoxins. And uh, a study was done when you uh, feed uh, a person uh, animal product that has these endotoxins, uh, there's a burst of inflammation within hours of eating the food. Thus, uh, Dr. Greger concludes that by eliminating or even just reducing animal products in your diet, if you don't want to become vegan, that's fine, but even limiting the animal products and substituting them with a diet rich in antioxidants, this can help you reduce the chances of your experiencing depression. Now, I find this really interesting because I've studied nutrition for quite some time and I've learned uh, through a Dr. Ornish who's been, oh my God, he's been doing this for 20, 30 years, He's shown that a plant-based diet can actually stop or even reverse heart disease. So interesting that uh, depression is linked to heart disease. People who are depressed are more likely to get heart disease. So uh, a, a diet rich in plants is good for your brain and it's also good for your heart. So a good reason to eat more plants and add more plants to your diet. This has been Douglas Block. I hope you found the information on this Flashback Friday video helpful. If so, please give it a like as likes draw more and more people to this channel and hopefully some more subscribers. Uh, you can also leave your comments in the comments section or email me douglasblock at gmail.com. If you do want to subscribe to this channel, click on my photo in the closing credits. You'll be taken to my subscribe page. And if you click on the bell to the right, you'll be notified every time I do a new video or live chat. And if you want to contribute to this uh, channel and become a patron, simply click on the Patreon image, you'll be taken to my crowdfunding site. And until next video, I wish you the best in your mental health recovery. Thank you so much.